The Rebbe starts off the Sikha by saying that one of the places in Shas where the Gemara compares Torah to an Adam, to a person, to a Yid, which is hinted in this week's parsha, Zois HaToyra Adam, as we'll soon see the context of the Posuk. So what we're saying, Torah, Zois HaToyra is an Adam, in other words, Torah is compared to Adam, is in the end of Mesechta Megillah. So this Sikha is also a Siyum of Mesechta Megillah. So one of the so the comparison between Torah and a person is in many things, starting with the fact that just like a person is made up of a goof and a neshama, a body and a soul, so too we have in Torah. We have in the person Ramachi Vari Mishasa Gidim, so too in Torah, Torah instructs us in the 248 mitzvah and 365 mitzvah loisase, and other comparisons. What do we have in our parsha? The parsha says, Zois ha Adam. There, the context is speaking about a person, Adam Kiyamuz Boil. So, simply, the Pasuk means, Zois ha these are the laws of a person that passes away in a tent. But we also understand this as Zois ha Torah. Torah itself is compared to an Adam or an Adam compared to Torah. So, in our parsha, again, it's referring to a person passing away. In a similar way, says the Rebbe. This idea, the comparison between Torah and a person, is found in Mesech the Megillah as well, in this Gemara that we're going to be discussing. So it's also there in connection to passing away, because Omar Raparnuch, Raparnuch says, Kala oiche sefer Torah orum. Anybody that holds a sefer Torah, when the sefer Torah is undressed, unclothed, it's not covered, Nik, in other words, there's no cloth on it, Nikbar Arum, then he himself ends up being buried Arum. He also ends up being buried Arum naked or unclothed, uncovered, which we'll soon see what that means. Furthermore, says the Rebbe, just like in our Parsha, it's speaking not only about death itself, but it's in connection in the context of the Halachis of Tumor. So too, this particular Limud that we just said, that if a person holds the Sefer Torah uncovered, he ends up being buried uncovered. Says the Rebbe, in the Gemara we see that it's as a result of this concern that a person should not hold the Sefer Torah uncovered. The Chachamim actually made a gzera of Tuma on one's hands. That is, that if a person touches directly, without, a, without an interruption, without something in between, a person touches directly the parchment of the Sefer Torah, then he would touch Teruma, he would actually make the Teruma. Possibly, you'd make the truma that it's not, not fit right now for eating. Because of this thing that Raparnach taught, that if a person should never hold the Sefer Torah unclothed. Says the Rebbe, via Shloimer, we could say that in this particular sugya, Mesech the Megillah, there is a certain chidush, a certain whole way of no, looking at it, uh, both in the, in the idea of what it, what's the concept of the Sefer Torah being uncovered, and what is the cloth of the Sefer Torah all about, as well as in the connection between Torah and mitzvahs, it, as, as far as the person is concerned, how it's connected to the person, to what extent. As we'll soon see all of this. The Rebbe now quotes the Gemara at the end of Masech to Megillah. Amar said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, anybody that holds a Sefer Torah uncovered, Nigbar Arum, he ends up being buried uncovered, not dressed. Then the Gemara says, Arum Salka Do you actually think it means literally that he, that he gets buried uncovered? Rather, the Gemara says, Ela Ema, Nigbar Arum Beloi Mitzvahs. It means that he's buried naked, bare, without any mitzvahs. Then the Gemara goes further and says, Beloi Mitzvah Salka Do you think it actually means he gets buried without any mitzvahs? He gets buried without that particular mitzvah, which again later in the Sikha we'll see what this refers to, what is that particular mitzvah that we're talking about. But first the Rebbe says it's obvious and discussed many, many times that even when we have a kasalka daitoch in Gemara, even when we have in the Gemara something that the Gemara ultimately rejects, it's just an initial thought in the Gemara. So this also is something that makes 100% sense and not only logically, in human logic, but also in the Seichel HaToyra. In other words, it has room in Torah, even the Kasal even the initial thought. Because we're speaking about Tanoim and Amiroim, who their whole involvement was just in Torah. So it's obvious that even when they have a Kasal an initial way of looking at something, 
So it's not just any svara, any sort of idea that does has no room in Torah, that has no place in Torah. Rather, this itself makes sense according to Torah. Furthermore, says the Rebbe, Rabbi Ashi, who's the one that put the Gemara together, surely did not put into the Gemara every single discussion, debate, and initial thoughts that were said in the base Medrash. Even though it's understood that even those svaras also have a room in the Seichel of Torah. Again, because these are about Tanoim and Amiroim. And especially that they definitely make sense in the context of the sugya where they were said. And nevertheless, Ravashi didn't put in a lot of that discussion. So from the fact that certain Savari, certain ideas and original thoughts, things that came up initially as, as an idea, Ravashi did put into the Gemara. So this tells us that it's not only that they make sense, even in Torah, but furthermore, they actually add in the understanding, in the explanation of the particular thing that we're trying to learn in this sugya. And not only that, says the Rebbe V'yash Loimar, that even as far as the maskon of the halacha, the bottom line, once the halacha comes out, even then it's relevant to understand some of the things that the Gemara initially negated. Says the Rebbe, based on all of this, we need to understand what are the svaris in our case, in the initial thoughts, that nikvar arum, means either that it means literally or that it means without mitzvahs because he held the Sefer Torah uncovered until finally we come to the maskana that it means without that mitzvah. So what are the other thoughts that the Gemara had? What was that thought process? Says the Rebbe, but Pashtus we could say that when we say that someone that holds the Sefer Torah uncovered, so he's buried uncovered, so it's not just a punishment but rather it's a consequence and a result from the actual way he held the Sefer Torah itself. Or to put it in other ways, it's the concept of a punishment, mida keneged, mida measure for measure. That is, a person is compared to a Sefer Torah, as we mentioned already earlier, and the, as the Gemara says, ha'oymed al when a person is standing there, when a, a person passes away, when the neshama leaves the body, he has to tear his clothes, and the Gemara explains why, because it's similar to a Sefer Torah that was burnt. A person passing away is similar to a Sefer Torah. And passing away is similar to the Sefer Torah being burnt. So therefore, automatically, since a person is compared to the Sefer Torah, if he held the Sefer Torah uncovered, then automatically, he too, that's compared to the Sefer Torah, will be buried, arum, undressed in the most literal sense, without any clothes. But then, so that might be what the Gemara initially thinks. The Gemara is then negating the Svara. Why? The Gemara says, Arum Salkadaita will it enter your mind that it actually means completely undressed. Why not? Says the Rebbe, because being buried undressed without clothes, that would be a punishment mainly for the goof, just for the body, basically. The body is being buried uncovered. But the comparison between a person and Sefer Torah is primarily the Neshama. And therefore the punishment of holding the Sefer Torah uncovered should be mainly for the Neshama. And this is why the Gemara continues and says, It means that he gets buried naked without mitzvahs. Because then it would be a proper punishment, Mida Keneged Mida, since he held the Sefer Torah uncovered. Therefore, he's getting this punishment that he's going to be buried without mitzvahs, which is then is a punishment for the Neshama. And then the Gemara asks, Arum bloy mitzvahs al Do you actually think it means without any mitzvahs? Why should a person lose out all of his mitzvahs? And in this Abaya concludes, it means, Arum bloy oisa mitzvah, that he just loses out on this particular mitzvah. But the Rebbe is not satisfied with this way of learning. The Rebbe says it's not glatik, it's not smooth. Because if the whole question on that initial Savara was only in the fact that being buried undressed is, is, is only a punishment for the body and it's not a punishment for the neshama and it's as we said the neshama is the one that's compared to the Sefer Torah so when the Gemara is asking the question of Arum Salkadaitoch do you think he actually is buried un, uh, undressed the Gemara should have also put in the word Nikvar Nikvar Arum Salkadaitoch do you think it means he's buried undressed because that is the main problem, that who's being buried is the body that's being buried. But the Gemara just says, Arum Salkadaitach, undressed, you think? In other words, from the continuation, from the flow of the wording of the Gemara, it sounds like the discussion is not who is being punished, by the way, whether it's the guf or the neshama, 
which is the Nisham is the one that's compared to the Sefer Torah, but rather the discussion is how do we understand the word Arum? That's the main issue in the Gemara, not who is the one being punished. Now, the Rebbe moves on before discussing how we do understand these three Svaras. The Rebbe now moves on to how we understand that last statement of the Gemara. So we said that the Gemara says, Arum beloy oisa mitzvah, that he gets buried without that particular mitzvah. What is this referring to? What's that mitzvah? So Toysvah has two explanations. Yesh mefarshim, some explain. It means the mitzvah of holding the Sefer Torah. That mitzvah itself is what he loses out. He's not going to be getting credit for that mitzvah. So the Toysvah asks, the kosher, my ribusa. What's the chiddush in that? Why would that even be a, why would we even think that he should have that mitzvah? That should be obvious that he doesn't get reward for that mitzvah. Since he didn't do the mitzvah properly, obviously he's holding it not the way he should be. So obviously he's not going to get reward for it. So Toysvah says, Lakach pirish riva. So the riva explains, Beloy oisa mitzvah means without the mitzvah that he was doing at the time when he was holding the Sefer Torah. That is, if he was holding the Sefer Torah uncovered, and at the same time he was learning in the Sefer Torah, he doesn't have the schar for reading, for learning the Sefer Torah. If he's holding the Sefer Torah because he's being goyled the Sefer Torah, which is also a mitzvah, a great thing to be goyled the Sefer Torah, or if he's holding the Sefer Torah because he's checking it and fixing the Sefer Torah, so reward for those mitzvahs he's not getting. But then Toysavis concludes, Aval, but if he holds it with the proper covering, with the cloth, with the covering, then Eirech Yomim Bimina, long life, is, as the Pasuk says, is, 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 is in the right side of the Torah, Bismoilo Eishar V'chavid, and left as richness and honor, etc. So the Rebbe has two questions. Number one, a similar, a little bit of a similar question to before, where the Rebbe wants to understand both Svaris of Toysavis, both the one that Toysavis originally says, and he rejects, and the second one. So the Rebbe wants to understand, what is the Svar of these two days? Whether Beloy Oysa Mitzvah means, Mitzvah's Achiza, the Mitzvah of holding it, as the opinion of the Yesh Mufarshim. Furthermore, the Rebbe says, from the fact that Rashi doesn't explain anything on these words, Beloy Oysa Mitzvah, it, it would seem to be, it, it seems to be implied that he also, is learning as this pirush, because that's the, if you want to read the literal wording of the Gemara, the literal translation would sound like we're speaking about below oisa mitzvah without the mitzvah of holding the Sefer Torah. So it would seem like Rashi also agrees to this way of learning. So what's the svara of this opinion? Or, according to the conclusion of Taisvah's the Riva, that was speaking about the mitzvah of reading, learning, rolling, or checking the Sefer Torah, since he was doing them at that time. So that's the first question. What's the svar of these two opinions? And question number two is, what, what does Toysavis mean with his conclusion, but if he does hold it with the cloth, then Now the Rebbe says, simply you would say, Toysavis is trying to conclude, he's trying to f finish off on a positive note. This is the end of the whole Mesechta. And so he's fin trying to finish off with, on a positive note, with a bracha. And in fact, you could say that this is, this is the reason why, although we have the exact same toisvus in Mesech to Shabbos, over there, toisvus does not conclude with this whole sentence, that if you hold it with the cloth, then there's all these brachas, because there it's actually not a seam of the Mesech It's only in the middle of the sumya. So, th so that you could say simply, but the Rebbe says, you can't actually say that this is the only reason. Because if that's the case... If you just want to finish off on a positive note, you could just say, but if he holds it with a the cloth, then he has the, the reward for reading it, etc., for learning it, without bringing in a whole new idea, seemingly, in this Pasuk of Eirech Yomim Bimina, which seemingly has no connection over here. Says the Rebbe, we can explain all of this in the following way. These three explanations, or opinions, if you want, in the meaning of Nikbar Arm, of what it means that he, a person is buried unclothed, are really three opinions in how we understand the gedr, how we understand the definition of the mitpachas, of the cloth, in connection to the Sefer Torah, which could be learned in a number of ways. One way of understanding the cloth is that it's not important, so to speak. It's not relevant. It's not noigeya to the Sefer Torah itself. It's an additional thing to the Torah. It's in order for the person to be able to hold on to the Sefer Torah. 
because it needs to be in an honorable way, not in a disgraceful way. So in order for the person to hold it, there needs to be a cloth. But it's not in any way an impact on the Torah itself. A second way of learning it is that it's not only that the person should be able to hold the Sefer Torah, but that it's actually relevant and adds in the honor of the Sefer Torah on its own. In other words, covering Sefer Torah demands that it should have a mitpachas, that it should have a covering. That's part of the honor of the Sefer Torah. In, in, or to put it a little bit differently, says the Rebbe, it's not only a din in the gavra in the person, that the person is holding it in, with, through the cloth, but it's a din in the chefts of the Sefer Torah itself. The Sefer Torah itself needs this garment. In the Ha'aro of Aaron 22, the Rebbe says this can be similar to the two explanations regarding guarding the Beis HaMikdosh. One reason for guarding the Beis HaMikdosh is more that no person that doesn't belong there should walk in. And another explanation is that the Shmira is a derech covered for the Beis HaMikdosh. Further in the Sikha, the Rebbe says, another way of putting the difference again between these two ways of looking at it, is it more of a matter of Indian Shlili, more of a negative, in other words, it's a disgrace to hold the Sefer Torah when it's uncovered. Or it's more of a positive thing. The, the cloth itself is actually adding to the honor of the Sefer Torah generally. So again, these are still two points, two ways of looking at it. And now we have a third way. It's not only negated to the covenant of the Sefer Torah, but rather it's connected and comes from the actual Kedusha of the Sefer Torah itself, from the actual Sefer Torah itself. In other words, just like you have, the Rebbe gives it as an example. We have the margin, the parchment on the side of the writing, the margin in the Sefer Torah, which is wholly because of the Sefer Torah itself, says the Rebbe in a similar way. As part of the Kedusha of the Sefer Torah, it also has this cloth, which now becomes like part of the Sefer Torah itself, similar to the margins. Says the Rebbe, these are the three svaris, or the three opinions in the Gemara. According to the first opinion, where we said nikvar aru means simply without clothes, uncovered with his physical clothes, this would fit with the understanding of the mitpachas, of the covering, that it's like a totally separate thing to the Sefer Torah. Yes, it's a covering, it's a levush, it's a garment of the Sefer Torah, but it's nothing to do with the Sefer Torah per se, with the Sefer Torah itself. And therefore the punishment for holding the Sefer Torah like that is that the person is also going to lose something external to himself. His garments, which are completely separate to him and are mainly persons wearing clothes, either mainly for other people or to take off that embarrassment of being unclothed, but it's something completely separate to the person himself. A second way of looking at it, and this is the second svar or opinion of the Gemara, that it means buried without mitzvahs, so here the Svara is connected with a second way of understanding the cloth of the Sefer Torah, that it's actually connected with the Sefer Torah itself. It's part of the honor of the Sefer Torah itself. And therefore the punishment of holding the Sefer Torah uncovered is that he loses his mitzvahs. He's buried without mitzvahs. Because mitzvahs also are the levushim, the garments of both the neshama of the person as well as of Torah, but not the kind of garments that's a removed and separate thing but rather the kind that's mamish very much part of and relevant to the Torah itself. Why? Because Torah is all about learning the halachis of the mitzvahs. And then the mitzvahs themselves become the garments, the tools through which the halachis of Torah could be carried out practically. So therefore, it's not just an external garment as in the first opinion. It's something that's very important for the Torah itself. And so too by the person that's learning the Torah. And he's compared to a Torah itself, as we said, Zeus Torah Adam. That his levushim, his garments, as far as compared to the Torah inside of him, are his mitzvahs. The mitzvahs are becoming levushim, but again, not like an external garment, but a levushim is very much part of him. So that's all the second opinion. And finally, says the Rebbe, according to the final conclusion of the Gemara, the answer of Abaye, Nikvar Arum B'loi Oysa Mitzvah, that he loses out that mitzvah, so this is now going to be fitting with the third way of looking at the mitpachas, at the covering. That this covering is not a, a separate thing that's connected with the Sefer Torah, but rather it's becoming mamish as part of the Sefer Torah itself. And according to this opinion, says the Rebbe, so we can't say that the punishment is that we're just taking away just other mitzvahs, any other mitzvahs. Because again, these mitzvahs are at the end of the day something separate. They are the garments of the Torah of the person. Yes, they're connected, but it's still a garment. But rather, arum beloi oisa mitzvah means he's taka losing out this mitzvah itself. 
which is the mitzvah of the mitpachas, this covering which is a part of the Sefer Torah, as will be elaborated soon. But before that, the Rebbe just adds another point. The Rebbe says, if this is the way we understand it, that the mitpachas is mamish one with the Sefer Torah, says the Rebbe, this will add explanation with this statement of Rav Parnach, with the following statement that says afterwards, Amar Rabbianai, Rabbianai says, that when you are putting the Sefer Torah into the cloth, you need to wrap the cloth around the Sefer Torah, it is better to wrap the cloth around the Sefer Torah and not wrap the Sefer Torah, roll the Sefer Torah sort of into the cloth. How are they connected, these two statements? It's not just because they're both speaking about the cloth of the Sefer Torah. But really, it's very much part of the same idea. That is, according to the conclusion of the Gemara that we just said, that the mitpachas, this cloth, is not a side levush, a side garment to the Sefer Torah. And it's not even the kind of levush that becomes mamish connected with the Sefer Torah. But furthermore, it's part of the Sefer Torah. So then you would, would have been able to maybe think that then there's no difference whether you're rolling the cloth around the Sefer Torah or you're rolling the Sefer Torah into the cloth. The cloth is anyways part of the Torah, so to speak. And this is where Abiyana comes and says that you're right, there's taka no isur because the mitpachas, this cloth, is mamish like those margins around the Sefer Torah itself on the top of the parchment, the bottom of the parchment, and so on. But nevertheless, it's still better to roll the, the cloth because it's still not the actual Torah itself, like the Torah, like the Torah for itself. But now going back to the point of how do we understand this third idea of nikvar arum beloy oisa mitzvah, and that's all connected with this idea of the mitpachas of the cloth not being a separate thing of the Torah, but it's mamish one with the sefer Torah. It's as if part of the sefer Torah. And the Rebbe is now also going to have a look at the two ways of in Toisvus, of the two opinions of what it means beloy oisa mitzvah. So the Rebbe first introduces another concept, which will help us understand this idea. The Rebbe said, the Gemara says, if a person tears Kriya for someone that passed away, and he does it on Shabbos, so even though he was Machalo Shabbos, nevertheless, he fulfilled the mitzvah of Kriya. Says the Rebbe, according to that, seemingly it should have been in our case, a person is holding the Sefer Torah uncovered, so yes, he's doing something inappropriate, but perhaps he shouldn't be losing out the mitzvah of holding the Sefer Torah itself. In other words, the Aveira that he's doing of how he's holding, it shouldn't take away from the mitzvah itself of that, the fact that he's holding the Sefer Torah. Similar to what we just said, the person still did a Kriya even though he was Machal Shabbos. So this is what Toisvus is coming in the first, in, in, in the, according to the Yeshma Farshim, the first opinion in Toisvus. And this is what the way Toysus is learning of what the idea of what Abaye is saying is, Nikvar Arum Loy Oisa Mitzvah, to tell you that in fact, no, it's considered that he did not do the mitzvah. Why? Because the mitpachas, because this cloth is not a separate thing from the Sefer Torah, rather it's mamish part of the Sefer Torah. And therefore, when you're holding the Sefer Torah uncovered without the cloth, it's as if you're missing something from the Torah itself. And therefore, you're also not holding the Sefer Torah. You're, miss, you're missing in the midst of holding the Sefer Torah because the Sefer Torah itself is in a certain way missing, it's lacking. So that's the initial thought of Toysavus or the initial opinion in Toysavus. But Toysavus doesn't accept this because if that's the case, says the Rebbe, well, what happened now is that according to Abayi's explanation, the translation of Nikbar Aram is completely changing. How so? Because according to the first two ways, what is the punishment? The punishment is that we're taking away certain things, certain garments that he had on his own, and we're not letting him have it, whether it's his physical clothes or the mitzvahs that he had. But according to this pshat, Arun B'loyo is a mitzvah, the understanding would now be, that what we're saying is he never had the mitzvah to start with. There was something lacking in the mitzvah to start with, and that's the pshat, Arun B'loyo is a mitzvah. But from the simple reading of the Gemara, it sounds like that all three opinions are discussing the same gather, the same general idea of what Nikbar Arum is. It's a punishment that we're taking something away from him. Not that just he's not just benefiting or getting the schus that he should have had. And therefore, Riva, the second opinion of Toysavah says, Nikbar Arum B'loyah is a mitzvah, means that he's going to lose out on a mitzvah that he was doing at that time. That is, that if, for example, if he was holding the Sefer Torah uncovered and he was learning, he was reading at that time, 
Ain't lois that he doesn't get the reward for reading it. In other words, here he did the mitzvah, like like in the other case, he did he he had some schus. He had a certain garment that he should have had. He did the mitzvah. We're punishing him, or we're taking away the reward for reading or for learning in the Sefer Torah. The Rebbe now goes a step deeper in understanding the difference of opinion between the Yesh Mefarshim and Riva. The Rebbe says that really what they're arguing about is in the Etzem Geder of that Mitpachas. In other words, to what extent the Mitpachas is part of the Torah. Both opinions are going to say it's part of the Torah, because that's the third opinion, as the Rebbe is explaining this Gemara. But that itself is now going to be explained in two ways. According to the first opinion in Torah, Yesh Mefarshim, the Mitpachas is a part of what the Rebbe calls the Metzius of the Sefer Torah, just the physical Sefer Torah itself. And therefore, it's going to be connected just with the mitzvah of holding the Torah. But it's not connected, the Mitpachas is not going to be connected to mitzvahs that are, connect, that are to do with and connected with the point of Torah, the content of Torah, the goal of Torah, which is to learn the Torah, to teach the Torah, and to read the Torah, and the like. And therefore, the first opinion of Toysavis cannot learn that Arum B'loi Oysa Mitzvah means that it's going to impact the Mitzvah of Kriya that he's doing, the reading the Torah that he's doing at the time, because reading of the Torah has no connection with the Mitpachas, with the covering of the Torah. And therefore, we can't say that the Isra of holding the Sefer Torah without the cloth should impact the fact that he was reading the Torah at the time. If we want to go back to the comparison between Tearing Kriya on Shabbos, where we said before that he's Yoitza. So now the Rebbe says we're going to compare what this first opinion of Toysavis to another case. In the Yerushalmi, the Yerushalmi explains that there's a difference between Kareya B'Shabbos, where he used Yoitza Kriya, and Matzah Gzula, stolen Matzah, where he was not Yoitza, Yidei Pesach. He wasn't Yoitza on Pesach. So what does the Yerushalmi say? The Yerushalmi says, that in the case of matzah, that itself, the stolen matzah itself that he's eating is an Aveira. Whereas in the case of Kriya, in the case of Kriya, yes, he's doing an Aveira at the time when he's Kireya B'Shabbos. But the bottom line is the Kriya was still a proper Kriya. And that's why he's Yoytze. Just to point out in the footnote over here, the Rebbe says this in Yerushalmi, there's quite a number of Pirushim in these words. The Rebbe brings from the Stechemed. But the main point that's relevant to us is that the fact that he's being over and Aveira at the time is not impacting the mitzvah of Kriya. And therefore going back to the point of holding the Sefer Torah according to this first opinion, what they would say is yes, he's holding the Sefer Torah in an inappropriate way, but in no way should the fact that he was doing other things at the time be impacted by that. So it is similar then to the Kriya of Shabbos. Doing Kriya on Shabbos. Whereas according to the Riva, the Mitpachas, the cloth, goes much deeper than that. It's connected to the whole idea of the Sefer Torah. All the details of the Sefer Torah are connected to each other. And therefore when a person is holding the Sefer Torah uncovered, then he's lacking also not only in the holding of the Sefer Torah, but also the mitzvahs that are associated with the Sefer Torah, in the reading of the Torah, in the learning of the Torah. Even though in the person's actions there seems to be two separate things. Here he's holding the Torah, and here he's le learning the Torah. And yet, according to this opinion, the Mitpachas is so deeply connected to the Torah, it even impacts the learning that he does. Says the Rebbe, based on all of this, we can now understand Toysavis' conclusion, Avol But if he holds it with the cloth, So how do we understand this? Chazal tell us that this Pasuk, Oyrech Yomim Bimina Bismoyla Oyshev Chavoid, are speaking about two categories of those that learn Torah. Lemaiminin Ba, to those that take the Torah on the, in, in, their, in the right side. Oyrech Yomim, long life. Lemasmi Ilim Ba, to those that go to the left. Oyshev Chavoid. What does this mean? So Rashi tells us, Maiminin Ba, the right of those that learn Torah Lishma. Masmi Ilim are those that learn Torah Shaloy Lishma. But what does Shaloy Lushmo actually mean over here? Says the Rebbe, from the fact that we're saying that these Masme'ilim, these that are learning Shaloy Lushmo, are getting Oysha V'chavoid, clearly not, we don't mean the kind of Shaloy Lushmo in the most literal sense regarding which Chazal say that if a person is not Zoich and doesn't learn Torah properly, then the Torah becomes like a Samamavis for him, like a poison for him. We're speaking about a Shaloy Lushmo 
that's the kind of learning that would get the person reward, Oishir Vachavoid. So he's clearly learning tight on some, some proper level. So what is he learning tight on? What does Shaloy Lishma mean over here? So the Rebbe says we explained a number of times that Shaloy Lishma in a more subtle way could mean not only when a person is learning Torah with some ulterior motive, which is completely not connected with Avoid Hashem. A person can be learning Torah for the sake of mitzvahs. He's learning Torah in order to know how he's supposed to be acting. And yet in a certain sense, in a subtle way, that's still some form of Shaloy Lishma. Because the learning is not for the sake of Torah, Limud Torah for itself, but rather, you're learning Torah for fulfillment of mitzvahs. What is the full Lishma? Limud Torah, learning Torah in order just to understand the Torah itself. Similar to what the Chazal say, Droish v'kabal schar. You just learn and you'll get reward. But what does it mean, Droish v'kabal schar? Not that you're learning for the reward. You're just learning for the sake of learning. A reward eventually will come. Or as the Gemara says, Yagdil Torah v'yadir. It's just for increasing more and more in the greatness and the glory of Torah, etc., etc. In other words, learning Torah, even when it's not Negei Lahalach Alamaisa. So that's the ultimate of Lushma. Applying that now to the Sefer Torah and the Mitpachas. The Rebbe says, this is the idea of the Mitpachas, the cloth of a Sefer Torah, spiritually speaking. Which, as we said before, it's part of Torah. But what is the Mitpachas? Says the Rebbe, when, when a person is learning Torah in order to know what he has to do, this is obviously an absolute necessity. The Rebbe is going to compare this to the mitpachas, which is necessary for the Sefer Torah. On the contrary, the Rebbe says, it's, it's the first thing in Limud Torah. Of course, number one is, you need to learn Torah in order to know how to behave, how to do the mitzvahs. But that's still not the learning Torah on its own, for itself. It's for the sake of mitzvahs. On the other hand, says the Rebbe, it's not as if the doing of the mitzvahs is a separate thing from Limud Torah. It's only, it's the, the idea of it's like a lavush that's connected with the Torah. In other words, as we said before, the halachas of the Torah are being carried out practically through the doing of mitzvahs. But the Rebbe says it's not only that. In other words, going back for a second, sorry. So it's not only like a lavush that's connected to Torah. It's much more than that. It's like a tchila one with the Torah, as we explained by the mitpachas. It's one of the ways of learning Torah. 100%. So it's absolutely one with Torah. But nevertheless, compared to limud ha Torah l'shmo, for the sake of Torah itself, this limut still is in some way like a mitpachas, like the cloth, like the levush of the goof of the body or the essence of real, true learning Torah. So this is what Toysavis concludes, that when achzoi be mitpachas, that when you're holding, this is the second opinion of Toysavis, that you, what were you doing? You were holding it in a cloth and at the same time learning. So what does this refer to? And Toysavis says, So what Toysavis is saying is when you have two things, on the one hand, you have which is like you're holding it in a cloth. In other words, you don't mamish have the Torah for the sake of Torah. You're learning Torah in order to know what to do. That's But if at the same time, you also have a Torah, but you're also learning Torah for the sake of Torah itself. So when you have both of these things are together, then you have both in Yadam of the reward. In the most literal sense, until the ultimate, in the most real way,